In this lesson we're going to evaluate some expressions that involve negatives and absolute values. And so uh, let's start with this one here. Um, so we understand that the words opposite and negative can be used interchangeably. So really we're asking for the opposite of negative 5, which of course is 5. And another way to think of what just happened here is basically this negative and this negative zap each other and leave us with just 5. Now when you have negatives involved and you have absolute values involved, you need to follow the rule of take the absolute value of a number before applying any negatives that are on the outside. So what is the absolute value of 7? Well, remember, the absolute value is the distance from 0. So the absolute value of 7 is 7. But then what happens is this negative comes down because the absolute value isn't going to get rid of a negative that's outside of it, and it's going to come down. So what we end up with is the opposite of the absolute value of 7 is the opposite of 7, which is, of course, negative 7. In this example over here, before I do anything else, I notice I've got the vertical bars here indicating this is the absolute value. So before doing anything else, we answer the question of what is the absolute value of negative 8? Well, the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. This negative happens to go along for the ride because it is outside of the absolute value symbols. And so this expression simplifies to negative 8. Now down here we've got some complicated things going on inside the absolute value. So if there are th things that need to be simplified inside these vertical bars, do that first. So we recognize this is the opposite of negative 6. And the opposite of negative 6 is 6. But we've just taken care of this piece. We still have the absolute value bars out here. So what is the absolute value of 6? Well, of course, that's 6, because absolute value leaves positives alone. Now, finally, we have this idea of evaluating an expression, um, and we've seen this back in Chapter 1. So here, uh, we have to be a little bit more careful than we even did in Chapter 1, because now we're working with negatives. And so one important thing to remember is that when you plug a negative number in for a variable, you're going to almost always want to put that negative in parentheses. Uh, just watch what happens if I don't do that. That negative is there from the original expression. That absolute value bar is there from the original expression. This negative is there from the original expression. And then I'm supposed to plug negative 18 in for k. close that absolute value bar. I think we can agree that this does not look right to have a negative negative or uh, just right in a row like that. So we always are going to put parentheses around the negatives we plug in for letters uh, just to kind of protect those negatives. And so the first thing we'll do here is we'll figure out what's going on inside of the absolute value. The opposite of negative 18 is of course 18. We still have the absolute value bars here. And then this negative comes along for the ride. Then the absolute value of 18 is 18. And again, because that negative is on the outside, it comes along for the ride. So the answer here is negative 18.